everyone. Today is a very sad day because I'm actually leaving Malaysia, but it is also a kind of exciting day because I'm going to Cambodia for the first time. I've never been to Cambodia before, so I'm really excited for that. But given that I am very sadly leaving KL, I wanted to make the video today um, in the airport <laughs> to give you some tips of things that you should know or things that I wish I knew before coming to Malaysia. So here are the things that you should know before visiting Malaysia and KL for the first time. My number one tip would be to get the Grab app. So I downloaded this in my home country before coming here because you need a phone number linked to it. And so I used my Australian phone number and you needed to verify it. So I would recommend getting the Grab app before you come. Um, you can do it here, but you'll need a phone number. I've used it so much while I've been here. So, so it's like a Uber, so like a ride share, but you can also order food on it. Um, and it's really handy. So I use Grab a lot. So number one would 100% be get Grab. Two is kind of linked to that would be, um, make sure you have phone data. I use an eSIM, I use Air Arlo, I'm not affiliated or sponsored to say that, but I love the eSIM setup and just having it and the cost of flexibility. So I usually just get that like once I get to the country, to be honest, and it's an instant download and it's pretty cheap but having phone data makes things so much easier to be able to use maps and so just have that independence if you go out. There is some Wi-Fi hotspots around the city, but having it on my phone just makes life so much easier. So I would absolutely recommend making sure you have your data sorted uh, when you get here. Something else, I guess, is just the distance from the airport to the middle of KL. So it's kind of between 40 minutes and an hour, depending on like traffic and things like that. So it is a little bit further than it might be in some cities, um, also closer than other cities. So yeah, just to allow, I guess an hour or a bit more, sometimes in peak time, it's really bad with traffic. So not to rush getting from the airport or to the airport and just leaving yourself heaps of time. Um, I would always just get a grab from Bucket Bintang to the airport this morning. It only cost like 25 Australian dollars. So it's pretty reasonably priced to get here and home given the distance, um, but yeah, it isn't like super, super close. So Google Maps is really good here, which is amazing. It's not always the case in um, Asian cities. So you can search keywords, search key terms, and usually find what you're looking for. So I'd say use Google Maps. Um, if you're vegetarian, apps like Happy Cow are pretty good as well. But honestly, I just use Google Maps a lot. I also contribute to Google Maps a lot. I'm one of those people. So I'd use that. Um, but also I'd recommend just like stopping at places that you walk past, like on the sides of the roads that look interesting. So Obviously doing research and finding places you want to go to is great. Um, using YouTube channels is always a good place to find food recommendations as well. But just walking along the side of the road and just seeing like some random mamak and stopping there I think is part of the experience as well. So lean into not always knowing what you want to eat, stumble across stuff and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. A recommendation I would have, and this is obviously depending on your budget, but that would be to stay in like the bucket and tank area if you can, um, or anywhere around there. So there's different areas of KL and there's so much to see in different ones. So there's different reasons to stay in different areas. I have a soft spot for bucket and tank. I think the shopping there is really cool. The food around there is amazing. The markets, like the nightlife, the, light, the lights. There's so much to see and do there. I would recommend staying there, obviously, depending on your means and what you're into. But every time I'm in KL, I stay there and I love it. So I know I've touched on Grab a few times. Again, I'm not sponsored or paid to say any of this, but I would use it for ride shares. Um, obviously, you can see the prices of stuff before you book. Uh, public transport's okay here. Like, the trams are pretty good. I've used the monorail, um, so they're not too bad. But a lot of the time, the Grabs are so cheap. Um, especially from like Australian dollars or like foreign um, currency that it just makes sense to get grabs places. So I was a bit shyer to get grabs places when I first came and now I've been here a few times. Um, I'm much more open to it, but it's a pretty walkable city as well. So um, it's pretty fine. So I can walk a lot of the time if something's close um, and there's a lot of like overpasses and walkable sort of areas, but yeah, grabs are very good. So get the, get the ride shares when you can. <laughs> Um, so I love going to the gym, um, lifting weights and things. The gyms in particularly around Bucket Bintang are pretty good, but they're pretty expensive by like Southeast Asian standards, especially with the price of other things in Malaysia being relatively cheap. Um, might be better for longer term 
contracts, but for a week, for example, I just went to Celebrity Fitness in um, the middle of Bucket Bintang, and it was 75 Australian dollars for five days, which is pretty expensive. Last time I was here, I went to Life in Fitness um, near the Imbi station, and that was a similar price as well, like, you know, between 50 and 70 dollars a week. So relatively expensive there may be cheaper options around and if you know any gyms around the area that has casual passes that are cheaper let me know because i'll definitely be back um but yes if you're going to go to a gym i'd say do a bit of research beforehand not all of them do casual passes and some of them are a bit more expensive than i'd expect it to be given the prices of other things and how cheap gyms are in other cities. Something I think is really important to do while you're here is to try new foods, try different things. Obviously, I love Malaysian food. Like, I make no secret how much I love Malaysian food. But what's amazing about this place is that it's so multicultural in this city that you will get the best Malaysian food of your life, obviously. But there's also some really cool stuff here that I've never seen before, like Middle Eastern foods I hadn't seen before, types of Indian cuisines, Thai things like there's just a lot um a lot of different foods and even the Chinese food here is different to the Chinese food you get in different countries so I would say try lots of different stuff enjoy the Malaysian foods of course because they're amazing but also broaden your horizons with other types of cuisines and other nationalities foods because there's a very cool availability of foods here and it's making me very excited to travel to even more areas of the world to try foods in different places but I love the multicultural melting pot that the cuisine is in chaos. This is probably pretty common knowledge but it is hot in Malaysia pretty much all year. It's kind of hot and dry or hot and rainy. Um, it is the rainy season at the moment so it's really humid and it's been raining in the afternoons and sometimes in the mornings. So obviously check before you come what the weather's going to be like but honestly even in the wet season it'll rain for like 30 or 40 minutes and then it's fine so I've been here different times of the year I don't think it's a bad time to come to Malaysia you just got to kind of plan around it be flexible with it and look even when it rains it's not cold so it's not too bad and there's a lot in this city that's like undercover or in shopping malls and things so it's not like it's um you know can really ruin a lot of your plans so be flexible work around it deal with the rain um but yeah it's hot <laughs> Cool clothes. Next to the rain and the umbrellas is you will need an umbrella. That's a big tip. Buy an umbrella. Um, a lot of the time when it rains, you'll find random sellers and random guys walking around the street that sell those like clear umbrellas for between five and ten ringgit, pretty cheap. So I would say if you see somebody selling umbrellas on the side of the road, just grab grab one, buy one. Um, they also sell umbrellas in like 7-Elevens, but I was seeing them they're between 30 and 40 ringgit, so a lot more expensive. I guess bigger, better quality, depending on what you want. But um, I'd say support the local sellers, the random guys with the umbrellas, buy a clear one for five ringgit. You're probably gonna need it depending on the time of year. Something I love about Malaysia is just how accepting and open and welcoming it is. So when I've been to some other cities, I um, am cautious about the kinds of clothes that I will wear to make sure I'm you know, fitting in with what they culturally accept and not you know, dressing inappropriately. Um, but obviously within reason, I find Malaysia is very open and welcoming, so I will wear singlets, shorts, skirts, especially what I mean, especially within you know Bucket Bintang and KL City. I don't have to worry too much about what I wear. Um, so you know things like having your shoulders open or whatever, no one seems to mind too much. Um, so I'd say don't stress a huge amount and wear what you're comfortable in, wear what you're happy in. Particularly within the cities, it's pretty progressive, pretty young, welcoming open however in saying that of course the city is pretty progressive and open and fine with you know what you sort of wear but i would say bring some conservative clothing whether it's like pants or long skirts or things like that and some shirts that cover up a little bit more in case you want to go to like temples or religious sites because in those kinds of places you're obviously wanting to dress a little bit more conservatively so bring a variety of clothes um, for those sorts of days but you'll know when you need to do that Obviously look up any dress codes in any places you're going and do your own research to make sure you're wearing what you're comfortable in and what is situationally appropriate. I'm just sort of sharing my experiences, but yeah, I think um, you wear mostly what you want in the cities and then 
a little bit more conservative when you're going to particular places that call for In it. terms of cuisine, so the most common cutlery that you'll get here will be the fork and spoon. I love eating with a fork and spoon. I think it's great. I think knife and fork is overrated. Love a fork and spoon country. So lean into that, enjoy it. Um, usually hold your spoon in the right hand and your fork in the left and you kind of like push food onto your spoon. I'm sure you can watch videos about it. Um, I love that part of like eating here. And then also in some other sort of Indian places you go to, uh, it's pretty common to eat with your hands. So I'd also recommend leaning into that. It's a very cool experience. I needed to watch some videos to learn how to best eat with my hands because it's a skill I haven't really developed before coming here. Um, so it's very cool. The eating culture and the way you eat here is a little bit different to some other parts. So obviously no secret, I love KL. <laughs> um, I think it's an amazing city, but I would recommend getting out of the city as well. So I know there's so many more amazing places in Malaysia to explore. I'm yet to go to any other major cities in Malaysia so watch this space I will be back um, but even from KL there's some amazing day trips that you can do out of the city so I'd recommend looking into those either organized through tour providers or you can find drivers that will take you out for day trips I have found in my experience it's pretty reasonably priced and I've honestly done some of the best day trips of my life from KL I think the Blue Tears trip where you see the phytoplankton, um, like the glowing plankton in the water, is probably to date the coolest thing I've done or up there in the top couple of coolest things I've done and that's only like an hour from Kale. So explore outside of the city as well, there's monkey parks, there's the Batu Caves, there's obviously the Blue Tears, there's wild eagles, like I've done some amazing stuff from this city. So even if you're just visiting KL, you can do so much more in a day. So broaden your horizons, go do some stuff, go do some tours. And this is a little random bonus one. Uh, we know I love animals, <laughs> um, but keep your eyes peeled for wild otters. When I was up in um, the north where the Blue Tears is, we actually saw a family of wild otters in the river, which is amazing. And just yesterday when I was in the botanical gardens in the middle of KL, I saw a massive family of otters there playing and swimming around and squeaking and eating fish and just being really, really cute. So I didn't realize there was wild otters around KL. So go to the botanical gardens, look in the ponds. When you're out, just keep an eye on the water and you may see families of otters. <laughs> I hope you found this video interesting and insightful and hopefully it's helpful for you in your next trip or your first trip to KL. Um, if I've missed anything from this list, comment below. Um, I love to collaborate. I love to get all of your comments and thoughts. I love to see your feedback on my videos, so feel free to let me know below. Um, and if you've enjoyed this, if you could like the video, amazing. And if you could and if you could subscribe to my channel, that would mean the world to me. It helps me to keep going and making content. So thank you in advance for doing that. And yeah, thank you for watching my video and I will see you on the next one in Cambodia. Bye.